Brad Zoo. Well, well hi, hi there. there. I'm here today with Emily, who's one of the coolest people on the whole planet, at the Rad Zoo, which is not a zoo that I named, but this is totally what I would name a zoo, because we want to show you 10 of Ten. the see. raddest reptiles at the Rad Zoo. It's a lot. Yeah, let's go check them out. I can't wait. High five. Rad Zoo. One of the raddest reptiles at the Rad Zoo, in my opinion, is the legless lizard they have oh. here. They actually have two, I think. The Sheltapusic, they are really stinking rad because yeah. they're a lizard with no legs. No big deal. Yeah, it's just only the coolest thing out there. Everyone thinks it's a snake until you see that it has ear holes and eyelids and cone-shaped teeth. You can't see the cone-shaped teeth. But... No, well, you don't want to. Mm -hmm. They are often actually pretty excited to show you the cone-shaped teeth. They love food. We learned that here today, actually. They love their food, but they're so unique oh, and yeah. weird that I just love them. Well, I, you know I agree with you because this is one of the animals that I own and you own. In fact, we both have... A legless lizard named Legolas. Yeah, we have Legolas. Uh, you know, and we, we use them in presentations, and I don't know about you, but in my experience, that is one of the animals that blows people's minds the most. It does. It's a great educational animal. Definitely a rad reptile. So one of the raddest reptiles, in my opinion, at the Rad Zoo is definitely my favorite turtle, and maybe my favorite animal, period, which really? is the common snapping turtle. Aww. I love them so much, it's unreasonable. I, I, I like turtles generally, um, but these guys, they are so intelligent and so prehistoric looking and so ferocious and adorable and hideous simultaneously. And they've got this giant long neck, which they used to do suction feeding, sort of like a Mata Mata, which is one of the coolest things in the world. And they got a big old tail off of a crocodile and, and a shell with jagged -eed things at the end and huge ridges. and. I just, I cannot imagine a cooler turtle existing, and then behavior-wise, they're like a monitor lizard that lives in the water, and you have one, so... We do. I love her to pieces as well, and you hit pretty much all the same reasons why I think snapping, common snapping turtles are really cool. I think a lot of people assume that they're going to be aggressive, but really, they're not, they're very smart. And I think because of that, they learn to recognize people as food bearers. Mm -hmm. and. I suppose one in the wild may show some oh, aggressive... When you put one in the wild, it's cranky. And they, they can snap back way over their shell. They can, but in captivity, they're surprisingly docile oh, if you wonderful. work with them. And they're very excited to see you whenever you come. Yes. Oh, food! It's you, I love you! I love their personalities. The best. Next on my list for the top, my top five and overall top ten raddest reptiles here would be the giant Madagascar hognose. Mm. Whoever watches my channel knows that I really like hognose snakes, mm -hmm. and the giant Madagascar hogs just take it to a whole new level with their sheer size, their voracious appetites, and they're just different than all of the other hog noses. Absolutely, because they're not even that closely related to the other hogs, but no. they've still got that goofy nose. Yeah, a little bit of an upturned snout, but they're in an entirely different genus from South America. They're just really, really cool. I, I totally agree. I know that, that your uh, Madagascar hogs were some of them I was the most excited to see last time when I came here to visit you. I, I love hognose snakes, and one of the best and worst things about our native hogs is that they're small. Yes. And so finding a giant snake that looks like a hognose snake, stinking rad. How can you go wrong? You can't. My next, and mine are in no particular order, I think yours are as well, but one of the raddest reptiles here at the Rad Zoo, in my opinion, is the alligator snapping turtle. I see a theme. <laughs> I love me some snapping turtles. And the thing about alligator snapping turtles is they are so very different from common snapping turtles. Yeah. They actually, and, and I say this when I'm not in earshot of common snapping turtles, they're radder looking than common snapping turtles. Their jaws are more ferocious. The spikes on their shell, like the big ridges, are way more pronounced. They're an even more prehistoric looking turtle than the second most prehistoric turtle in the world, which is the common snapping turtle. They look so, so cool. And they've got this amazing lure tongue that they used to feed with. I mean, you know, my, the, only, the only reason that I think common snapping turtles are even radder is just because their personalities are more fun. But an alligator snapping turtle is actually a lot easier to handle, a lot easier to deal with. And then it's mm -hmm. so cool looking. And yes, it could bite your hand off. 
which is stinking rad. <laughs> you just like the threat. <laughs> yeah, it's I there, it. but I don't have to stick my hand in there. Right. Could you see yourself getting an alligator snapper? Absolutely. Really? I absolutely could see that. Nice. I, not, not in the near future, but someday I would love to have an alligator snapper. Oh, there you go. You heard it, guys. Someday Clint will get an alligator. There are a lot of things on my list from today that are on my someday list. <laughs> the next animal on my list of the raddest reptiles at the Rad Zoo is... The animal that I might think is the raddest reptile in the world, which is the Cuvier's dwarf, dwarf caiman, I love them. For one thing, they're the smallest crocodilian in the world, which in some ways makes them the most potentially reasonable crocodilian to own, though none are. And these guys, their personality makes it so they're not very reasonable. But it's almost possible. It's you know, another one on my list of possible someday animals if I had a facility like this. But on top of that, I think they're the coolest looking of all crocodilians. They've got osteoderms everywhere, including on the bottom. They just got these crazy eyes and they awesome do. faces. They do. I hear they have, yeah, like you said, I've also heard they have big attitudes. Yeah. And I love their short snout heads. Oh, yeah. Like, they're just dwarfed and, like, I mean, hence their name. They are adorable, but, I mean, their personalities are much bigger than they are. It's almost like if you took a small alligator and then put the armor on it from a medieval horse. Then you have your Cuvier's dwarf caiman. That's it. One of the raddest reptiles at the Rad Zoo. Since we're on the topic of crocodilians, I, of course, can't leave the Rad Zoo without saying one of my favorite species here is the American alligator, because we have Rex, our rescued American alligator. I notice you own most of the animals on your list of the raddest reptiles. That means you're living <laughs> the dream, Emily. We, we are pretty fortunate. We have a lot of... We're lucky to have a lot of the reptiles we do, but the American alligator is one that we weren't ever expecting to no. have. But we saw them here at the Rad Zoo, too. I love how they, they look like puppy dogs. You just want to give them a big hug. They're puppy dogs with scales and a lot of teeth. Mm -hmm. Not that I'd ever recommend them as a pet like a puppy dog, but mm -hmm. they are also very, very intelligent, if not the most intelligent type of reptile out there, the alligators, croc crocodilians in general. And I think I really like that because you can work with them mm -hmm. and you can not only target train them, but they will learn their names. Like, I've, so I've cool. heard of alligators in zoo settings where each alligator has its own name and the uh, keeper can call its name and only that alligator will come up to get food. I love alligators. They're incredibly smart. I, I, honestly, if American alligators were the size of Cuvier's Dwarf Caimans... It'd be perfect. Oh, it'd be perfection. Uh, Why does such a thing not exist? Except for Rex. But except Rex, for Rex. Rex is a, uh, a special case. You don't want Rex to have No, you don't want it to do that to an alligator. Yeah. The next one on my list of the raddest reptiles at the Rad Zoo is the eyelash viper. Mm, good choice. Uh, you'll notice all of the animals on here are too unreasonable for me to own them, but they're close enough to reasonable that I'm like, maybe someday. And if I was ever going to own a viper, it would be an eyelash viper. Uh, it's fair. Not only is it arguably the most beautiful of all snakes, period. They are gorgeous. And, and you know, especially vipers which are some of the coolest looking snakes there are. They're also uh, out in the open all the time, so you can see them. And if they bite you, while it's terribly disappointing, it's probably not going to kill you. And that's really important when you own a viper. Mm -hmm. and, and so it all combines to really the only viper that even approaches being reasonable, and I love them. I like it. Those are, yeah, I can see why you like them. <laughs> I really like that they're arboreal. Mm -hmm. Like, I really like bush vipers that are oh, yeah. uh, not very similar, but they're both arboreal vipers. Mm -hmm. So I can definitely see where you're coming from. And they're beautiful. So pretty. Eyelash vipers are gorgeous. So cool. I'd have to say that my next favorite, most, the raddest species here would there be the go. Bocort's water snake. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, I had never heard of them until I saw one just, just now here at the Red Zoo. They are so cool. Okay, I don't know much about them, but they flick their tongue underwater. They look like abandoned water snake, but I guess they spend the vast majority of their time underwater. Mm -hmm. What a neat snake. It was totally rad. And I've got to say, I think that was the only animal at the Rad Zoo I had never, ever heard of. And, and I, I totally agree with you. Not only is it one I didn't know about, it's also really awesome. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that... That's an excellent choice. And like flicking their tongue underwater makes sense because they're fish eaters, so they need to be able to smell for the fish. Yep. It was just something that I didn't put two and two together. Like, why would a snake flick its tongue under the water? But and I've seen anacondas do it. But like, when you get a snake that's that size, 
and uh, instead of the size of an anaconda, and mm. it's doing all the cool stuff that anacondas do. Thinking rad. Like yeah, yes it is. <laughs> so I really, I discovered when we were here that I really like aquatic snakes. Uh, I've noticed that about you today. Yeah, I didn't know that about myself <laughs> until today, but my next raddest species here at the Red Zoo, I think would be the file snake, also known as the elephant trunk snake. They also, like some other reptiles out there, have just this puppy dog face and they have this floppy skin and it's super loose and it's like, why do they have that much skin? It's, there's just extra there and they live completely underwater. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. It's like a snake that's inside of the skin of a much larger snake. <laughs> that's exactly it, yes. Uh, you need to check out our, our video. We've got a top five of the weirdest pet reptiles and we have elephant trunk snakes and that. another aquatic snake called a tentacled snake that you're yep. gonna love. Those are cool too. Because you yeah. <laughs> love you some aquatic snakes. I do. Like, we, Ed and I considered getting a, a, a file snake or an elephant trunk snake. I actually almost got one at the last Tinley show, but we decided we were not ready because you need yep. to make sure that their tank is fully cycled. And perfect. And perfect, the pH has to be perfect and you need good filtration. Someday I would love to have one, but we're not ready for one yet, so I'll just I'll appreciate it here at the Rad Zoo. That's okay. I mean, you own most of the rad reptiles that you love the most. There can be some on your Sunday list. Yep, someday I'll get a file snake. <laughs> okay, so next on my list of the raddest reptiles at the Rad Zoo was the yellow anaconda, which I know is a strange choice since they have a green anaconda. But, um, I mean, honestly, if you want to impress somebody who doesn't know much about snakes by the kind of snake you have, unless you say cobra, <laughs> Anaconda is probably the coolest thing you could possibly say. And, mm -hmm. and the thing is, the green anaconda is a completely unreasonable pet snake. They get Com huge. They get enormous and they're super powerful and <sighs> notoriously not that nice. Whereas the yellow anaconda is also notoriously not that nice and also very strong and also quite large, but not as insanely large. And in my opinion, more beautiful than the green anaconda and so to me the yellow anaconda is the more desirable of the two and you still get to tell people you've got a stinking anaconda i know people aren't gonna many people out there don't even know that there's multiple types of anaconda no they don't so if you say yellow anaconda they're gonna think you're just as cool as if you had a green anaconda absolutely and it's much more reasonable to keep in captivity yeah more reasonable unreasonable but more reasonable <laughs> yeah. you know and the, and the thing is if somebody walks into your house and you've got an awesome enclosure with a 12 foot yellow anaconda in it they're not gonna be like look at that dinky little anaconda it's still impressively colossal, but maybe not quite as likely to overpower you. That's fair. That's and fair. That is neat. <laughs> Love anacondas. Oh, yeah, me too, but I don't know if I want to own one. Nope. This one might not even be on my Sunday Really? List. I would love but one maybe. someday. Oh, I want. I want a green someday. You'd be the right person. I'm gonna for jump a green. right on in. Not not now, but <laughs> someday. Well, Emily, I have had a rad time at the Rad Zoo. Same here. It's like the raddest place on earth. It, that it that it very well may be, and I, I really appreciate you inviting us to come with you on this amazing journey and to show us what you thought were the five raddest reptiles at the Rad Zoo. I'm glad that you're able to point out yours. It's neat to see some uh, like a different perspective on what your favorites are versus. And I think we agree that. Oh. All 10 of those are really cool. There wasn't a single one of those 10 that wasn't just stinking rad. Mm -hmm. and, and some of the ones that were on your list were very nearly on my list. Vice versa, yeah. Right. <laughs> Anacondas, those are cool. And I loved learning that you like water snakes so much. I'm excited <laughs> to have learned that today. <laughs> we got three on this list. Yeah. Right? That's pretty good. Two of them are yours. I, I contributed. <laughs> good, job. good job. Yeah, I do what I can. Thank you guys for joining us on this rad journey to the rad zoo. This isn't the only video that's coming out of the two of us at the Rad Zoo. No, it isn't. There's another coming out. Two. Two. Two on Emily's channel, Snake Discovery, oh, yeah. just in case you didn't know. <laughs> Three total. So go check those out. We'll have links to them down in the description as soon as they exist. They may exist already. I don't know when this video is coming out, when my video is coming out. Me either. They'll all be kind of close in proximity. Yeah, and it's going to be awesome. Yes. Rad, if you will. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Also, thank you to our patrons at Patreon that sent us here to see Emily. You guys have made so many things possible for us. And thank you, guys. You funded uh, Jason, who never likes to show himself on camera, but he's behind the camera right now. You were able to fund their plane ticket up here to check out the Red Zoo. Absolutely. Otherwise, it would be me like this. <laughs> and this that would rad? be awkward.
Well, well hi, hi there. there. Oh, just, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and it's a okay. great word. Don't show that. <laughs> Actually, can I just mention how funny it is? Not funny, but different it is to see you in a t-shirt. All right, well, <laughs> I thought I'd shake things up today, you know? I like it. <laughs> I like it. We're going to a rad zoo. I thought, you know, this is, this is a more casual day. Shaking things Shaking. up. And I love the nearly headless Nick shirt. Oh, thank you. Well, which you can get from Emily's oh. <laughs> Teespring store, right? Yeah, one of our fans drew this, actually. It is so cool. Is cool? And nearly headless Nick is a cool snake named after a character from Harry Potter. I just learned when I read Harry Potter not so long Surprise, ago. Surprise, you didn't know that. I know, but it was a great name anyway. I think that'll work. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Is that recording the whole time? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. I didn't mean for it to be. Okay. I didn't know either. <laughs> I think that was perfect. Perfect. That was so perfect. One down. Yeah. Nine to go. High five. Perfect. Perfect. You are awesome. Yes. Oh, awesome. Yay. Rad, rad, radis, the rad, 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 radis, radis, rad, radis, rad, stinking rad, 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 stinking rad, radis, rad, rad, or rad, or stinking rad, radis, rad, radis, radis, rad, 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 rad